not a secondhand coat I want a yacht, not a cheap little boat I tell my daddy not to be depressed All I need for happiness is the best I want a dime and nothing else has appeared And when it comes to men, you know how I feel I want a real man Give me a real man, you know what I mean I want a real man Oh, a real man, you're what I need Really? Oh my goodness Welcome to my world, welcome to my world Hey, what's up? Welcome to Real Men. This is the men's magazine where men get real. I'm your host, Tim Steves. We have an all-star panel of yakkers assembled. So let's get to it right away. Dwayne Hill is here today. Yay for me. Hey, Dwayne. Happy to see you, buddy. Good. Also joining us, Lori Elliott. Yay for Dwayne. <laughs> uh, Chucky Burns in the house. Down with Dwayne. <laughs> oh, no. And John Paul also dropped in. Somebody has to. I'm with on. Whitey. Good to, <laughs> good to see you, JP. <laughs> That's actually how we're going to get this first segment kicked off with a uh, commentary from that very same John Paul. Go ahead, man. Tim, everyone knows, likes to talk to people. He asked me earlier, does fear of failure breed failure? Um, no, I don't think so. I think what happens is, in order to fail, you have to not believe in yourself. I think without fear, we'd have no heroes. And this world is all about heroes. If you're not scared of anything, then you can't overcome anything. I think those are the true brave souls. Ted Roosevelt once said, I think it was Ted Roosevelt, that there's nothing to fear but fear itself. Was that okay, Tim? Was, was, that, was, that, was that okay? I liked it. That's fine with me, JP. Grab some couch. Let's talk about this. Fear of failure. Uh, does it breed failure? Let's start with the big man. Dwayner, what do you think? If you're scared to fail, are you going to fail? Is that the thing? Yeah, I, you know, I think you can succeed in spite of yourself. I really do. I, I, but fear of failure, like, doing stand-up. I waited a very long time in my life before I tried stand-up. And talk about fear of failure. Like, when you get up there, it's like, be funny now. now. No, no, not now. <laughs> now. Right now. Right. And that's, like, the toughest, toughest. Like, rock stars, they get groupies. Comedians should get groupies because they're brave. Yeah. But I think, I think if you think you're going to fail, you probably will. But to be scared of, wow, I don't know what's going to happen, I, I think it's to totally different. Uh, I, you know, I think fear ideologies. of failure can prevent you from trying something. Mm -hmm. But I think fear of failure can also help you succeed. Because if you're scared it's not going to work, you might try that much harder to get it to work in the first exactly. place. Oh, you buy that, sure. Lauren? Yeah, yeah, I do. I think the biggest form of failure is... Uh, is not even trying something, yeah. so loser. And, yeah, you gotta you gotta try. But I mean, with respect to doing stand up and stuff, every time I get up on stage, I like I am terrified. I am gonna stink really? like really? every single time. What about you? Yeah, Chuck? but You're it kind of eggs guy? me on, and I, I do it anyway. You know, I. Uh, the only time of day I'm not scared is when I'm on stage. Yeah, I'm with Chuck. I mean, wow. that's the only time I know what I'm going to do is I when think, I do stand. Chuck yeah. also plays to really small town crowds that are going to laugh as soon as he, you know, cups a fart and smells it. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, listen, I walk out on stage, and I don't know which way it's going to go at the Kiwanis Club. Hey, anybody ever pick your nose and eat it? Stop laughing! I'm going to try to Chuck. I'm Chuck the man. Yeah, yeah, you know what? But, but what Dwayne doesn't understand is if you can get those people to laugh, you can get anybody to laugh. Which is true. Let's get back to fear of failure. If Michael somebody doesn't Know what big words in a mean. good sneaker ad, in a rare good sneaker ad, Michael Jordan in a voiceover said that he's been trusted to take the final shot in a game over 100 times. He's made that shot less than 30 times. And that's the key. Don't he be sucks. afraid to lose. Just take the damn shot. Yeah, but it took him 70 takes to get the line right. <laughs> <laughs> that man has done movies, and television, and commercials, and he still can't talk. And he has no fear of failing, apparently, on camera. I always say to myself, I always say, you know, like, in this business, you know, it's really tough to have, uh, you try to find a role model, you try to find somebody that, you know, kind of fills your niche. Mine was John Candy until his heart exploded in his chest. But, you know, Ralph Ben Murgy is my, is my guy. Because Ralph Ben Murgy can do it. I must be able to do it. I've got to. Ralph, he, he, can't, he doesn't even make himself laugh. You know what I mean? He's no fear of failure. He just plugs along. Another show. So, 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 like this, he does voice so the only guy who doesn't consistently do stand-up on the panel thinks that nobody's funny. Shock. <laughs> 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 airline food is funny. You tell your version. 
<laughs> no, but a fair, fair failure is, is, I think it's a great motivating factor. I mean, uh, like, like Laurie was saying, that uh, you're like, you know what, I'm going to conquer this, I can do this. And that, I, like I said, I think is what makes heroes. Oh, for And I sure. mean, heroes come on different levels. You, you have like, you know, the, the, the police and the firemen in New York, and then, then you have the, the dude who uh, is scared to go outside and because he might get hit by a truck or something like that, but goes outside. Yeah, then you have the, yeah. uh, then you have the guys like in Columbine, the SWAT team that hid behind an armored truck for nine hours. No, stay in your rooms, kids. They're almost out of bullets. <laughs> That's fear of death, though. That's but you not know what? fear They're... of failure, necessarily. They, yes, they, it is. Stay They're... on topic, Dwayne. Well, that, but that is. Go ahead. If you think it is, well, go ahead, I think Dwayne. somewhat. They were afraid. There was an armed guard in the school. It was an off-duty cop. He shot at the kids and ran. Then they threw you know, the whole SWAT team. Basically, it took kids to climb out of the window, which is bravery, to climb out of the window and, and run away because the cops wouldn't come in because they were worried about getting shot. Well, you know what? You're paid to get shot. Every day you come home and go, honey, it was a tough day. When you realize that being a cop actually, in, in, especially in Colorado, is, is less dangerous than building a motorhome, really. Yeah, but coming home after a day of work and saying, honey, I failed today. But well, a really bunch of kids like, got shot because I was afraid to go, I, yeah. you know, you should stop. But I think guys also have that attitude that, you know, I'm a real man and I can't show any type of, of, of failure to, to my woman because it would make me less of a man. Then uh, that, that's probably why people think fear of failure is such a well, sissy kind of thing. It's yeah, it's probably easy. the wrong I mean, year to be getting on cops. Failure. You know, fear of, I think a lot of guys deal, deal with that. I mean, you know, you've got your job, you've got your wife, your kids, your house, you're making your payments, things are going well, you lose your job. Fear of being a failure, I think, is, is the reason a lot of guys don't take risks. You know, I've got the safe job, maybe safe, I shouldn't yeah. oh, go yeah. after what I really want to do because if I do this and fail, my whole life will fall We're apart. Time. Especially when oh. families We're out of time for the segment, nice job panel. I think all cops are doing a great job and a few... Uh, <laughs> If you see me driving to home to tonight, you'll know I'm in approval. Good job, fellas. <laughs> hey, listen, when, uh, when we come back, we're going to be joined by a legitimate panelist, journalist Peter Kent is going to drop in. And we're going to talk about the changing face of men, the, uh, the, you know, the image of uh, the male deal. What is it? Are we switching it up? Are we changing? Peter Kent's going to drop in when we come back. Stay with us. Hey, what's up? Welcome back to Real Men. This segment, we're going to talk about the changing face of men, uh, the character of men. Is it changing? And we're joined by Peter Kent, journalist. Thanks for coming in, Peter. Pleasure. I appreciate it. You're going to add a little legitimacy to the show today, well, I think. Well, let's, uh, let's not anticipate. Uh, okay, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We, Fair uh, enough. Face reality. To start the segment, we're going to get it kicked off with Chucky Byrne. Go ahead, Chuck. The changing image of man. You know, life used to be pretty simple for a guy. You had your job, you had your wife at home. You got to be a man, she was a woman, but if she complained too much, who's going to hear her? She's chained up to the water heater. I mean, really, life was easy, but then women wanted equal rights, so we had to do that, and then everything started getting confused, and now guys have to be sensitive, and now they have to be politically correct, and they have to watch their language, and things have gotten so crazy that men don't know what they're going to do, and, and we're all kind of confused, and should we be nice? Should we be the bad boy? Should we be the nice boy? Should we be rude? Should we open the door, close the door, chair thing? Everything's crazy. I don't know what to do, Tim. All right, Chuck. Well, let's grab some couch and find out what is the plan. Let's, uh, we're joined by Peter Kent, journalist. 38 years in the business, Peter. Unbelievable. Long time. That is. A that's wild, time. man. Time flies, doesn't it? This face has changed in two years. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think... It's, it's falling it, apart. Just in your time in journalism, have you seen a big change in the way men want to represent themselves in the media and stuff? Oh, sure. There was a time that you had to have a look. You had to have a, a sound. You had to be, you had to fit into sort of a range Certain package. Of, exactly, and that's, uh, thankfully, that's passed now. Fortunately for me, my timing was right, and I did happen to work into at least part of that spectrum. But, uh, but... Uh, it's because you're easy on the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> for you well, thank, ladies Well, thank you so much. Can I sit here? He's got this hypnotic voice. <laughs> yes, Peter? Dwayne, walk towards the ledge. I'm walking, Peter. <laughs> Jump. <laughs> Peter! I well, guess. Let's, get, let's get the female perspective in right away, Laura. Are you, have you, are you noticing guys are changing? Oh, well, I, for sure, for sure. I look at, you know, my parents now and stuff, and my dad has come such a long way from when, you know, he was, he was you know, when we were little kids and stuff. And I think it's great. I, I just think, like, act like you would want to be treated and you're going to be fine. I don't think, I don't understand this whole, I don't know whether to do this and I don't know whether to do that. Do what you think inside is the right thing to do and you'll be, you'll be okay. Sounds like you want some balls with your man. I, I'd love some balls with my man. Unless but tears it's work like, too. <laughs> tears are good. Tears are good. I tears forgot my balls. 
See, <laughs> it's all right. You brought I think, your tears. I think much more is expected of us than it used to be. In what way? I don't think much because more you've un you've unchained the women from the the, I, I the exactly. water heater. It's a lot easier. Yeah. Well, first of all, they were scratching the date in the water heater every day. <laughs> Honey, these don't repair themselves. Much more is expected you from you. I don't think more is expected of us more so than uh, that. Uh, we can't get away with not caring anymore. Now women are right. like, you know what, take my feelings into consideration, and if you're gonna take me for granted, and you're not gonna be sensitive to my needs, we're gonna, this is just not gonna work out. And you're exactly. Like, what? I don't wanna make dinner every night of the week. I don't wanna make your bed every night of the week. I don't wanna wash your underwear every exactly. week. Exactly, you know? and like, those things do have to do that. Jump in here, Peter. But it's, but, but it's not enough just to be Sympathetic and sensitive. For sure. You want conversation too. You exactly. want dialogue. Oh, you want to be engaged. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, yeah. well, Peter knows. Got a little Peter knows. Yeah. That's why but you're expecting me. a little too much sometimes because it's not, it's not a natural uh, tendency of most men to. See, See, converse in stuff. great detail. Tendency. We're hunters. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, we'll be slaughtering deer. Well, oh, come on. The, Let the women I transcend the with you, please. I appreciate the fact that nowadays men are less racist in general. Generally sure. speaking, yeah. less racist, Whatever, less sexist, whitey. less anyway. homophobic. <laughs> in generally speaking, does that make up for the fact that we're getting awful soft? I don't think soft we're getting cells soft. Soft too. Soft actually works in a lot of in a I lot like of ways. Soft. I don't think I, I don't like think, I don't think we're getting soft. I think we're forced into to seeming like we're sensitive just because that's what a lot of women and women aren't scared to speak out anymore. Before it's like, what you say? And it's like nothing. And, but now it's like, you know, I'm taking Tybo. I'm a, you know, but Tybo don't even work because I mean, it just allow you to get your ass whooped for 45 minutes without getting tired. That's all it does. Yeah. <laughs> but the other side of men changing is that women have changed. Right, 100% huge. as well. Yeah. So really? yeah. yeah, there was this huge spike, I guess, in the 70s when now and just became really, and then it kind of, they went, oh, we also would like dinner bot too. That'd be nice. <laughs> now there's some women named. No, spike. we wanted a little <laughs> bit of a balance. That's what we wanted. I mean, it got but extreme. But not too much, but not too little. But I think, yeah. <laughs> what is the big deal I with think not, the pendulum how come starting you can't to come find back? A balance? Go ahead, Lori, yeah. what do you got there? No, I'm just saying, like, how come you can't find a balance? Everybody's, you That's expect life. everybody's speaking in extremes in this situation. Just right. find a wee balance and but, you're going to be Nature okay. doesn't have balance. Nature has. Yeah, but I don't think all of men's downs. tendencies are within nature, though. Like, a lot, so much of it is sociological. Say something cool, Peter. <laughs> we'll be right back after well, this message. Uh -oh. Peter, well, he, as a broadcaster, he can think it's the best of both worlds. Because guys are like, I listen to him, and girls are like, he's so sensitive. Let's send a nude picture of ourselves to him. <laughs> Come on, let's rock Wawa. Click. <laughs> Dear Peter, your voice is like honey. Yeah, you know how I feel about that. Like, I'm the target. Of Peter, do you get a lot of panties in the mail? <laughs> uh, actually, no, that, that fell to my brother, uh, the Scud Stud. Scud Stud. Oh, is that right. your brother? Yeah. Scud so, oh, you see, so and you he know. still gets them from Arthur the Arthur gets all the tail. He gets the Khaki War. panties. He That's got great. cakes. He got clothing. Really? He got photos. Unbelievable. Wow. All right, let's wrap up the segment. Wow. And he's a legit journalist as, on top of that. We're exactly. hanging out with Peter Kent today on Real Men. When we come back, we're going to talk about glory days. Back in high school, you might have won something, but now you're just fat. Coming back. Ow! <laughs> you're watching Real Men. Hey, welcome back to Real Men. We're joined with uh, Peter Kent's dropped in to hang with us people. today, and we're going to talk about gl glory days, this segment. High school, college, that kind of stuff. I know JP, my man JP, <laughs> has you nice. you played a little ball in your day, JP? Yeah, a little Fond basketball. memories? Uh, it's, it's, it's probably one of the best times, in, I mean, as a guy. I, don't, I, I really can't speak for women, because when you first start together in the season, like, I mean, if you play over a, a period of years, and then you, you move along with the same guys, eventually you get to the point where you know everybody on that team is thinking the same. I could so rely on Dwayne, I could so rely on Lori, on Peter, and, and not even think twice. <laughs> Chuck. <laughs> and Chuck. I made the team, but Gretzky Chuck didn't. Gretzky denied. <laughs> and, and I went on Somebody's got to pump the ball full of air over here. <laughs> and you, you don't even think more twice. Myself. You don't even think twice that these guys are going to let you down. And when you win, it is so sweet because everybody gave 238%, man. And Even when Chuck. I and when I let you down, <laughs> I go, sorry. And that's all it takes. But then, <laughs> no, there's no better feeling than that, man. You, you, everybody, you've... Everybody did it. Nobody's done more than the other person, and, and you can't buy that. Have you been able to recreate it since? No. 
I think the difference is when, been... like JP saying, I played some high school ball. And uh, when you're with another, you know, 12 guys in a van living together for eight months with a coach and there's 13 people working towards a goal, you never get that again. It's like actually, doing your turn with the heart. I actually, yeah, 13 guys in a van. The Scooby-Doo Well, game. obviously you guys never played any sports because that's how many it takes to make a team. You don't have five on at a time. You need lots of people on you the van You graduated waiting. sarcasm with honors. And what about the cheerleaders? No, okay. no cheerleaders at Sussex High. You become, oh. you know, you you become you. a family. No budget you become for a family. There, there's the arguing. There's the, uh, oh, that was great. And, uh, but, again, no one's feelings are hurt because it just makes people stronger. I don't Until you lose. Until you lose. Then you, I but I think you can learn as much from losing, up. obviously. And everything gets really sad. And then Tim went solo. Yeah. And, and then you know, Michael, well. Michael Jordan retires again. You go, well, reason, uh, goodbye, I you're coming back. I think the reason they become glory days is because good times plus a little bit of time afterwards, you look back on them and, and they, they were become perfect, great. Yeah. You, don't, you forget the, all the fights you had with those guys yeah. on the team, Actually, and you remember the times you did. Oh, yeah. I have a question yeah. for Peter yeah. Cold showers, as far yes. as glory days go. You've been this for a long time. And, you know, before September 11th, like the most you know, interesting story of the news was, is Anne Hayes crazy? And that was for like six months. Like, what would be your, what would be a, day, like a, 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 a news story that broke that was, you know, that was the biggest day in your career, do you think? Like, do you reflect upon that and go, that was, I was so excited because this, it was happening there now. Or saddened. Or saddened. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, I suppose every big news story I ever was assigned to, the day Kennedy was assassinated, um, the day um, uh, the space shuttle blew up on launch, I was editing a, a news story in our Miami, in NBC's Miami Beach uh, edit suite. Um, on Treasure Island between Miami Beach and, and the city of Miami and the windows looked north up the, uh, the coast. Wow. And we looked out the window. We knew the launch was happening, but we were sort of working to deadline. And then we noticed the contrail did that, that terrible symbolic three-way split yeah. and sort of realized that's not the way it's supposed to go. And about the same time we heard the, the, uh, the uh, speaker go on the other side, everybody get ready, the helicopter's coming, we're all going north. And up we went to uh, wow. to cover that as a as a big disastrous story. It's just so remarkable mm. because you know because th there is you know people we don't think you know, society takes their news when they want it. Yeah. But news always mm. happens and sometimes there ain't much going on. Oh, sure. you know? oh these plane the, the the plane disasters the plane crashes. I mean th there was a case um, where television cameras were pumping that out and millions of people saw those disasters happening in real time. As opposed to when, yeah. if you're working when Kennedy was assassinated, when there was nothing. Radio, basically, and Walter Cronkite in a studio in New York reading teletype copy, yeah. Right. So wow. do you think, it's, do you think I, I'm just throwing a question out, like, do you guys think, if we're, if we're talking about sports, I know we're talking about news and stuff, and talking about sports and glory days and, and high school and whatnot, do you, do you think it's possible, unless you play professional sports, to have, you know, that kind of feeling? Like, can you get that at a men's league? I think so. I think, you, I think you can get that anywhere. I think you can get that. I mean, basically, I mean, I get that feeling when I, when I went with eight buddies and we're all really drunk and, and driving up, you know, finding a cottage. <laughs> yes! Oh, oh, it says Steve on a big pink plaque. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. says Steve. I mean, oh, wow. when, when you can't compare that to making a hit on someone in open field, you know what? You're, you're saving a touchdown. You pop a dude. Hey, if you've got, you got a pop a dude while he's water skiing, sure. you know, up at a the trunk cottage. full of fun. That's just fun. That's not For really Dwayne, cool. a little drunk driving will suffice. <laughs> I'm not driving drunk. No, I'm not driving. No, we always, always kidnap somebody sober and make them drive <laughs> and then dispose oh. of the body convenient. <laughs> <laughs> but even a breakaway when you're renting rink time at three o'clock right. in the morning, yeah. you get a breakaway and a clean goal, and whoo. It well, might Peter, only last for a minute, minute. Nobody else really is is cheering with you, but, but for you'll a remember it. Yeah, Peter, we played a little yeah. pickup basketball last yeah. night, and it was really He's funny. Good. Within the first two or three transitions, one of the one of the older guys that comes out made a beautiful layback, and all his friends go, "Go home now, John!" Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. And that's what, that's what pickup ball is about. Yeah. Just go out. If you play long enough, you're going to have sure. a couple of moments where it all comes together, and you recapture it just oh, for, for a sure. second. Absolutely. Even it was my father's birthday last weekend, and we went over and we were hanging out with him. And he always talks about his old hockey stories and old drinking stories and stuff yeah. like that. And he's got such happiness in his eyes. And Peter, stuff. did, you play, uh, did you play sadness. sports? I did. I played basketball in high school, but I had two nicknames. One was Pee Wee and the other was Pinhead. <laughs> and although I was about as tall as Muggsy Bogues, I, I wasn't a point guard and I didn't shoot and <laughs> I was great. I was on the second team. That's but I but stay, stay put. We're going to come back. We've got a couple more minutes. <laughs> Peter Kent's joined us today on Real Men. We're talking Glory Days. Come back.
Welcome back to Real Men. We're having a very legitimate episode today. Dwayne, has anyone said penis yet? I have not said the word penis, and I mean that from the bottom of my penis. <laughs> the bottom we're of it. We're joined by Peter Kent, and I'm sure you've got to be rolling your eyes out the back of your head at this point, Peter. But <laughs> It is an adventure. Yeah. <laughs> it keeps you alert. We've been talking about glory days. Do you think guys like me and JP that, that actually had a little taste at some point in our lives, do we reminisce too much? Do we have to live in the present or... Is there no. anything wrong with looking back like that? No, it's a lot of fun. At, at least you have a, a, a memory in a sport that is today a, a, a popular heroic sport. My trophy is a bowling trophy I got when I was a, a newspaper delivery boy. Uh, and it's pretty hard to, to hold that up at, at you know, dinner conference. No, by the way, this is my uh, five-pin, duck-pin bowling trophy. Right? Yeah. Oh, well, at least you've got a hoop, you've got a net. We've yeah. all seen, we've seen Michael Jordan carrying a net. It's, yeah. How many bowling legends are there? Yeah. Well, I'll never forget when that man died in the middle of a tournament. He was eating cheese fries. Yeah, if you can smoke and drink while you play, that's it questionable. It ain't a sport. Yeah. You know, exactly. He smoking. didn't rent his shoes. Exactly. He owned his own pair. And he had a wrist protector. Yeah, and Lori Elliott, we'd, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention Lori Elliott it went to Worlds in the pool, a diver. <laughs> she was a diver. Yes, yes. Do you look back fondly on those times? I look back with a mixture of happiness and sadness because it's something I will never, ever be able to do again, I don't think, in what I do now, you know? And it, and, and it changed, like, when, I don't know if you guys felt this, but when you finished your sport, you, you're just left there with this kind of empty feeling of, like, that's it? There's nothing left like I'm just yeah. like a regular person now I had a friend I had a friend who was in, I was in high school with and she was she was supposed to go to the 1980 Olympics well we know how that went right <laughs> you know basically we yeah. boycotted them and she trained her whole life she's on the Olympic gymnastics team well four years later four 84 years comes around four years is a very long time in a gymnast gymnast life she was 13 now she's 17 well now she doesn't make the cut of the team well she spent the last nine years morning noon and night becoming a gymnast and you just don't have to, it's like it's like algebra it's you ain't gonna use shot. it practically oh, for sure that's why I think it's healthy to have you know different activities like don't just concentrate on one because you end up being completely vacant inside when you're finished Big with thing. Le sorry Peter that's it man. that's it I mean that's it Thanks I wanted to, to find out Peter. what a diver keeps these guys keep their nets what does a diver keep? A suit? I, I, I kept Caps. my memory. Thanks to Peter Kent. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Big ups to the Sussex Sonics of 84. Out. Sussex Sonics. <laughs> we can't. West Side is the best side. <laughs> Sussex Sonics keep it real. We wouldn't sell out. Like, terrible <laughs> 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 Did you ever go back? <laughs>